start Martin Luther began the Reformation in Wittenberg, Germany, and this concert is music of some of the first composers that we can identify as Lutheran. Certainly Lutherans didn't invent music in the church, but um, a lot of things did change and new opportunities came for composers and the people at song. And one of the things you'll notice is that many of these songs are based on hymn tunes. So that was one of the gifts in the Reformation, is that the people sang chorales and hymns, and uh, then they were built into the choral music as well, like this next piece, Gelobet Zygot, this Christmas carol by Martin Luther.
trust me. Um, Martin Luther, we certainly attribute many hymns that we still sing to Martin Luther, but he was also a trained musician himself. Uh, he knew the craft of composition and composed this motet. You're probably wishing I would have picked something a little less lengthy, uh, but I think you will find it having been worth it to hear it. Um, it was a very, very important text for Martin Luther. Actually, this was an antiphon, something that would have been sung as a refrain several times. And um, this text, I shall not die but live, Martin Luther felt important enough to write it on the wall of his study, as the program notes uh, indicate. By the way, our program notes were written by Victor Gebauer, who's sitting in the back, and so we're very grateful for these, Victor. Um, but we thought since I came and went so quick, we'll do it again. <laughs> you might have missed it. sing along, but you can at least, if you want to see, this hymn does exist. Uh, but it's a, a wonderful thing that people would recognize those tunes and being able, be able to enter in to the meaning of the text. And this is a beautiful melody that's sung in canon, and uh, not in unison canon, but canon at the fifth, and it's with the oboe and viola help the instrumentalists happen, which is very common.
that Martin Luther used bar songs. Have any of you heard this? I'm here to tell you that it doesn't imply drinking establishment songs. I doubt if, if the motet would work with uh, swinging a mug of beer. Um, but um, it had more to do with the structure, A, A, B, of the composition. And so that's why you have a phrase that repeats, and so it's A, A. And um, so that's a, a little misnomer that I've gotten around, or a little rumor that you can now fix. <laughs> so this next hymn is also a hymn in the Easter section of the ELW that we sing, or hip churches sing today. Um, Chris Saxony, Germany, how do they come up with so much stuff in one little area? So I want that water, <laughs> echoing this morning's gospel. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> the one reality that these composers dealt with was the Thirty Years' War, and pe millions of people were killed, and from week to week the musicians didn't know who would be there to sing. And um, so Heinrich Schutz, for example, would write simple things because he didn't know he'd have more than two parts. Um, or if he wrote more than two parts and only had two, an instrument would play the missing voice part. Uh, so there was all sorts of flexibility built into this music. But this prayer is striking because I feel like that must have been really an intense feeling for them to sing, grant peace in our time, O Lord. And that ownership of our time has never gone away, has it? And it's, it's something that's always appropriate. And I love this particular setting of this prayer, and there are many, uh, but I love this one because it begins in a very tender way, as if to say to God, please could, we, could you bring peace on earth? But by the end of it, we're shaking our fist at God like so many of the Psalms do, like, now! <laughs> so it's a, uh, one of those settings that just gets more and more intense.
Next piece by Heinrich Schutz. Ich bin der Auferstehung. I am the resurrection and the life. Um, something to note, other than the choir moving to different positions. <laughs> they can be like ants in an anthill sometimes. Um, we have different configurations for these pieces because the voicings are all different. That piece had uh, one choir of mostly upper voices and the second choir was mostly lower voices. So we separated them. And now we have two equal choirs. But the thing to listen for in this piece is some of the word painting that he builds in. Um, for Auferstehen, or to rise up, you'll hear this, you'll, you'll just hear that rising figure. And then there's a part where it goes, and those who die. And the music just kind of does that. And then bursts back to life, um, which the text indicates. So I know we're singing in German, but we did provide the English translation if you are interested in discovering those little gems.
exactly what was going on. That uh, they were singing a line what, and I knew the words, and I knew where they were in the liturgy. And that's the value of liturgy, especially melodies that transcend time and space and become something transcultural, trans above being very specific. Uh, but this is also an interesting setting, right, Pretorius? There was a lot of Italian influence in the music of this particular era. So we think we're the first generation to come up with blended worship. Well, it's been around a while. Um, but the Italian churches had balconies all over and the, the choirs would sing to each other. And if they didn't have enough voices, one of the choirs would be brass. Uh, or they just have three brass groups that would go back and forth. So this is one of those dialogical pieces for double choir based on a hymn tune that all, almost all European Lutherans would know. Oh, oh, oh. 
Good evening. My name is Adam Ryan Wall, and I'm the assistant conductor of the National Lutheran Choir and also work in community engagement for the organization. We're so glad that you could join us this afternoon and evening uh, for this wonderful collection of early Lutheran masterworks by master composers, and of course now Bach's beautiful and beloved Cantata No. 80, Ein Festival, A Mighty Fortress. This concert is the beginning of a bookend celebrating the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. Our concert in the fall that will be paired with this one is a beautiful uh, new concert of uh, a new work entitled Holy Spirit Mass, written by a Norwegian composer that is currently here in residence, uh, taking up a little bit of the sound of the choir, and we are very excited to welcome Kim Andre Arneson. If you're here, Kim, would you mind standing, please? Up there, everybody. We are very excited, very excited to premiere this new concert-length work by uh, Mr. Arneson uh, for chorus and orchestra celebrating and commemorating uh, the, the coming together of Lutheran and Catholic thought and commemoration around the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. Come back to see us at the, at the Ordway Concert Hall and at Ted Mann Concert Hall in October on the 27th and 29th. Tickets are available on our website. <laughs> I'd like to invite you to a free reception in the Fellowship Hall following the concert. You won't want to miss this because we'll have beer, pretzels, sausage, and singing. David Sherwin and Central Lutheran's Mark Senior will lead all of us in our favorite German hymns and drinking songs. And a special thanks goes out to Barrett Offs and her team of volunteers from right here at Central Lutheran for organizing the reception. Thank you so much. Thanks also go out to Nathan Canole of Thriving Financial for providing the funds for the reception. Nathan, will you please stand? Nathan has been with us all concert season in an effort to let our audience know that there is a very successful Fortune 500 company with headquarters right here in the Twin Cities that has millions of dollars to give away. <laughs> the trick is that you have to tell Thrivent where to direct those dollars. This could be to your church, college, or the National Lutheran Choir. Nathan will speak a little bit more at the reception. will help you find out if you are eligible to direct Thrivent Choice Dollars to the National Lutheran Choir or any other approved project. Finally, if you would take a moment to please fill out the survey in your concert program and leave it at the ticket table up in the front here or at the reception on your way out. This will help us to serve you better in the future. Thank you, and now back to the music.
steht denn bei Christi Blut gefärbt in Fahnen, o siehest, und glaube, dass dein Haupt dich nicht verlässt, ja, dass sein Sieg auch stier den Weg zu deiner Krone bannen, tritt freudig an den Krieg, wirst du nur Gottes Wort so hören als bewahren, so wird er weit gezwungen auszufahren. Dein Heiland bleibt dein Hort, dein Heiland bleibt dein Hort, dein Heiland bleibt dein Hort, dein Heiland bleibt dein Hort. Oh, dear. 